Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Biofacial Modules with Transparent Backsheets, Maximizing Performance and Reliability. I'm Kelly Pickerel, editor with Solar Power World, and before we get started, I want to go over just a few things. This webinar will be sent to all registrants so you can view it again. Slides are available to view at any time in the resource widget at the bottom of your screen. And you can submit any questions related to today's webinar in the Q&A widget. We will try to answer these during the webcast. If we do not get to your question, our presenters may reach out to you afterwards. And finally, if you're watching this on demand, you can still use all of these features. So let's get started with today's webinar, Biofacial Modules with Transparent Backsheets, Maximizing Performance and Reliability. Today's speakers are Koshik Roy Chordhori. He is Global Technology Leader for DuPont Photovoltaic Solutions. And Vikash Venkataramana, he is Technical Director at Jinko Solar US. And today we're just going to learn about the bi about bifacial solar modules that use transparent back sheets. And now I'll turn things over to Vikash. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, this is Vikash here from Jinko Solar. And I'm going to provide a brief, brief overview of why transparent back sheets are the best choice for bifacial modules. I'm going to start with a brief introduction of Jinko and then quickly follow up with an introduction to the technology and then start talking about the benefits of technology. Um, for an introduction to Jinko, I think a lot of you might be familiar with Jinko already, but um, I just thought I'll just touch upon a few points here. Um, as you all know, Jinko is a global leader in solar modules and solar module technology. Uh, we have six factories across the world. We've been number one since 2016 in terms of shipments. We have 35 sales offices across the world, and we've shipped over 55 gigawatts of modules globally. Uh, of that, in the U.S. alone, we've done about 10 gigawatts. And, um, you know, we sell in 109 countries. We have 15,000 employees, and we have about $4 billion plus revenue. Um, we've been, you know, rapidly growing. And as you can see on, the net, on this slide here, our global market share has been growing as well, and the same could be said of our U.S. market share as well. Um, as of, uh, you know, 2020, we are about 24% of the U.S. market uh, in terms of solar modules. So um, given that I provided a brief overview of the company, I'm going to quickly jump into the technology itself. Um, you might be familiar already with bifacial technology, so I'm going to quickly touch upon this just a little bit. Uh, the real benefit, as you all might already know, of using bifacial module is you get added power from the back of the module. So as opposed to a conventional monofacial module, a bifacial module also produces power by accessing light from the back of the module. And obviously all of this translates into savings for the customer from a land perspective, a BOS perspective, and generally you get more kilowatt, kilowatt hours per kilowatt peak. Uh, another great benefit of using bifacial is you get broader, you know, energy production peaks. So your typical curve looks like, you know, uh, a Gaussian profile is, is broader. So you get a broader shoulder with, you know, um, a solar production curve when you use bifacial modules. And based on our testing, we've seen variable gains with variable surfaces, which is the ground surface, essentially. Um, you know, typically white paint is the best reflective surface and provides higher gains, uh, but we've also seen gains on other services and it's provided here on the slide. Um, now that I've briefly introduced bifacial technology in general, I'm going to quickly jump into Jinko's offering here. So Jinko's core product as of today is what we call the Eagle G3 bifacial product, is a, a half cell bifacial module. Uh, some of the big benefits of Jinko's product is that it uses a transparent bifacial backsheet thereby reducing the weight of the product. Uh, we also partner with DuPont and use only use the Tedla film in all our products. Uh, and we also provide a 30-year performance warranty. This is you know, uh, an extended warranty beyond what a traditional monofacial module would, pre would provide generally, which is a 25-year warranty. So we completely you know, believe in the quality of our bifacial product and transparent back sheet. So we are willing to stand behind a 30-year performance warranty. And obviously, you get benefits in terms of energy gain with bifacial modules, and this gain varies based on applications. And uh, generally, with half cells, you have lower risk of hotspots as well. Um, in terms of the actual product specs, 
um, you know, it's uh, a conventional hassle by facial module. One big differentiation I'd like to point out here is the weight of the module is a lot less when you compare it to some of the glass glass modules out there. And besides that, you know, it's also a really high power class when you compare it to some of our other competitors. Uh, our power class roadmap is, you know, growing every year. And, and just um, some other note I want to add in here is that we have new products that we're also working on towards that will, you know, complement and, you know, enhance our power portfolio moving forward. Quickly transferring on to the benefits of bifacial modules. I'm going to start by talking about performance benefits and then quickly jump into reliability. Um, and yeah, feel free to ask questions to the end, but I'm just going to walk through these slides. Okay, um, in terms of uh, performance benefit, as I previously mentioned, bifacial modules that we make with transfer and back sheets are lighter. Uh, what you have here is a little table that tabulates different types of bifacial modules. So as you can see here, one of the key things here is weight uh, in kilograms. So you see that the weight, you know, is much lower than a glass glass module in general. And this becomes more and more relevant, uh, relevant as, you know, modules become bigger and bigger. And I think you might all be seeing today the industry is, you know, growing in terms of um, cell technology becoming, uh, providing bigger cells, resulting in bigger modules. So as modules become bigger and bigger, uh, weight is going to be an important parameter. And that's why it makes sense to cash in on the weight advantage today. Uh, and also, you know, make sure that we are prepared for the future. Um, our immediate advantages also come through BOS cost reduction and mounting cost reduction and labor cost reduction. Um, you know, because your modules are lighter, your logistics costs drop, your mounting costs drop, and general labor also drops. Uh, less racking, less people to carry modules, and so on and so forth. So all of these have a significant effect on your LTOE calculation. Um, another big advantage of using, you know, a transparent back sheet is uh, with our modules, we only use a 3.2 tempered glass on the front of the module um, because you have a transparent back sheet at the back. Uh, some of our competitors do dual glass where you have two millimeter glass, which is heat strengthened, it's not tempered. Uh, from a mechanical structural integrity perspective, tempered glass definitely has better mechanical properties than, you know, heat strengthened glass. So I would encourage you to actively, you know, probe into the mechanical properties of the glass because, you know, over a period of time, uh, and if you have these modules last for 30 years, it's important that mechanically they hold through that period of life. Um, and that's something we guarantee. And what we have here is a proven technology because monofacial modules also typically use 3.2 millimeter glass as well. So we're not changing a lot and, um, and essentially just changing the back sheet that we use. But when people move to dual glass modules, they really are making changes to the structural composition of the actual module. And this could have long-term effects on the performance and the product integrity from a long-term perspective. Um, another point I wanted to highlight was the fact that um, by using the, you know, Tedlar back sheet, we significantly reduce ultraviolet radiation that impacts the performance and the long-term degradation of the back sheet. Um, you know, and uh, we have, you know, modules that we have. We also have a dual glass module, Jinko, in other markets, and we've done comparisons between both these products. And we clearly see that if you use a transparent back sheet, you have a significant benefit for UV, um, you know, uh, essentially uh, by blocking UV when you when you compare it to a dual glass module. Um, what you see here on the right is a the graph that shows you, um, you know, the degradation after a certain amount of UV exposure. You see for a bifacial, you know, transparent back sheet module, the degradation is only 1.33 percent, but it's significantly higher for a dual glass module, and this is more so. Um, you know, becomes a bigger effect from a long-term perspective and would impact, you know, the economics and the performance of your module from a long-term perspective. Okay, um, another point I want to highlight is the um, resistance to saline corrosion. Um, so one big differentiation here is between glass and transparent back sheets is that glass have silicate in them and they have some solubility. So basically they corrode. And if you look at this picture down here for glass glass, you see after a typical salt 
miss tests of non epic bars of that salt miss test, you see some kind of corrosion beginning to appear on the glass glass. For a transparent batch sheet, you don't see any of that. So basically, um, a transparent batch sheet shows no discoloration and has full transparency and will allow full transmissibility. So that's a big advantage, especially in you know locations where you have uh, conditions like you know that have high amount of moisture and salt in combination. Typically, you see side location or some other similar locations like greenhouses or saline alkaline trolley, oil and so on. Um, another big resist, uh, another big benefit I want to talk about is uh, stain resistance of bifacial modules that use, that use transparent back sheets. Um, the point I'd like to highlight here is if you look at a transparent back sheet, the way you would find typically uh, the way the angle of contact of, say, a droplet would be very different. So primarily because Tedla PDF is, is hydrophobic and, uh, you know, glass is hydrophilic. So glass would, you know, not repel water as much as you would see uh, Tedla PDF do. And not just water or dirt of any contact on the actual surface. And this has a huge benefit from an O&M cost and perspective, um, making these modules easier to clean and maintain over the period of life of these modules. So uh, you would see O&M costs significantly drop when you use a PDF or a Kedla-based product over a glass glass product. And that's something I just wanted to quickly highlight. Uh, another very important point, which is of you know huge significance for uh, for the downstream, essentially, is the is the benefit you get from using transparent back sheet in terms of energy production. One of the key things we observed when we did some outdoor testing out in the field is that we found that um, transparent back sheet modules operate at lower temperatures when you compare them to dual glass modules. So in general, you would see that you know at high irradiance scenarios, the, the temperature of the module is lower. So this is primarily because you have, you know, great thermal conductivity. So you have con convection that is caused by the wind. So that's basically conductive heat transfer. And then you have conductive heat losses that basically is transferred through the back sheet. So when you use glass instead of back sheet, this hinders that thermal conductivity. But, a, but the back sheet really is a great thermal conductor. Uh, that's primarily because, you know, a significant portion of the IR component of the, of the incoming light is, trans is, is thermally transmitted, uh, transmitted really well. So in general, you see that a transparent back sheet module would produce more energy over a period of time when you compare it to a glass-glass module. Um, to further this point, we've done some outdoor studies and we've seen variable um, you know, gains in energy production uh, for transparent back sheet modules. So this is basically comparing you know, a transparent back sheet Jinko module to an equivalent glass glass modules, and we basically monitored energy over a period of time. As you can see in fixed installation and in tractor installations, you see benefits, and these benefits change significantly. And some of the sites that we touched on are there's a case scenario where we did a fixed sand kind of installation where we saw 0.85 percent more energy over a period of time. A sand tracker application where we saw up to 1.62 and a fixed insulation with cement as the you know, reflective surface, we saw about 1.81. And some of these results were also reflected by third-party studies. So we had sent modules out to PVEL, and they have an outdoor site where they monitor the performance of these modules. And they found that you know, um, transparent batch sheet modules did produce more energy over a period of time. They also noticed that they had lower operating temperature at higher irradiance. And that's basically because of your thermal conductivity of the back sheet in general. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's now kind of proven at this point that you know you get more energy out of your bifacial module that uses a transparent back sheet. So this really reflects from your economics, from your LCOE, and all of your calculations. So uh, this is definitely a big differentiator when you compare it to glass glass. So there's a strong economic advantage now to use a transparent back sheet than use a glass glass module. For bifacial. Okay, um, quick summary. As you can see, we have benefits in multiple facets here. One being weight, one being easy to clean. Um, obviously, um, you know, being better at UV, better mechanical properties, 
um, much better saline as high performance. And the big highlight here is really energy generation. So yeah, transparent batteries seem to be more favorable to provide, to produce more energy over a period of time. And at the same time, you know, also have very strong, uh, you know, strength in other aspects like rate, mechanical properties, and so on and so forth. Um, we're going to quickly change gears here to the reliability studies we've been doing. And I'm sure, uh, you know, uh, our partners at DuPont will touch a lot more on this. But I'll touch briefly on what Jinko has done and the results we've seen so far. In terms of reliability studies, I want to point out here that a typical Jinko module uses POE instead of EVA. The difference here being that POE has much higher UV resistance and also is very high PID resistance and also moisture resistance. So PLE is generally considered to be, a, you know, a superior, uh, um, you know, encapsulant when you compare it to EVA, which is the more traditionally used encapsulant. And this really enhances the output of the product in general. Besides that, obviously, we use, um, you know, the Tedla product or the Tedla Dupont product as a part of our batch sheet. And that really helps also provide a significant amount of UV resistance besides all the other points we touched upon previously. So really, our 30-year performance warranty is based on the quality of the products we put together when we build, you know, the, the Jinko bifacial module. A uh, quick slide here on how the UV um, uh, distribution inside the module typically takes place. So as you can see here, um, you know, when you look at the Tedla product, which is the outer film, so typically your back sheet has two or, or three layers typically that will be put together. Um, your middle layer is typically PET. The outer layer would be the, P, the PDF or the clear TED film, and the inner layer would be a fluoride coating in general. So the clear TED layer is, you know, reduces significant amount of UV transmissivity. So you can see about 0.5% uh, of UV is only transmitted, so off the 342 kilowatt hours, uh, you see only 1.75 going in. So that really protects your PET layer, which is the key layer for uh, integrity of the module over a period of life. Uh, similarly, the fluoroid coating above the PET layer also behaves um, in a manner that significantly protects the PET layer. And this really helps the PET layer prolong its life and stand by the 30-year period. And this is data that we measured at a, a specific site in Lhasa, Tibet. Uh, the point here being that, you know, all our materials are engineered to ensure long life, and that is clearly why we see them performing well in an outdoor performance scenario and in the lab as well. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about lab tests that we've been doing. Um, as you can see, there's a couple of tests here. One of those is the TC test, which is a tier, and you have uh, TC 200, 400, and 600. So TC really is thermal cycling, so you basically switch between high temperatures and low temperatures and you cycle through them through a period of time. Uh, one thing I'd like to note is TC200 is pretty much the base requirement for IEC. So when we do TC400 and TC600, we're doing three times what you would typically do for an IEC standard here. And the, the path criteria for IEC is really not having any degradation above uh, 5%. And as you can see, even when we go three times IEC, we aren't getting there yet, even with, with TC600. Um, the same with damp heat. The IEC requirement there is damp heat 1,000. And damp heat, again, is a test where you have high humidity environment, and then you have high temperatures, and then you see if that has, has an effect on your back sheet. And the base requirement for IEC is damp heat 1,000. But, you know, we've really extended the conventional IEC standard to do extended reliability. And if you go as far as damp heat 3,000, you see that we still don't hit the 5% uh, you know, basically pass fail criteria. So we are well within the, you know, uh, pass fail criteria for an IEC standard. So this really shows you that we're not just thinking about passing a criteria, but thinking beyond that. Uh, finally, I want to touch upon two other tests as well. One is the TC50 HF10. The humidity freeze test is where uh, you create an environment of very low temperatures with high humidity, and you check the properties. And as you can see, the in this case as well, it's three times IEC and we still aren't really there in terms of degradation. The same with the PID. The, the, the typical PID test is done for 96 hours, and we're doing 192, which is two times the PID. And yes, our performance is significantly better uh, than probably some of the competition out there. Um, 
basically changing gears here to a third party validation of this. So we've sent some of our modules to people who've been testing our bifacial products. And as you can see, uh, in terms of performance, the green here, if you can see clearly, is where Jinko stands in relation to all of the others. So M3 is Jinko in this slide, basically. And, you know, in, in a lot of the cases, we are as good or better in, in performance in all these tests when you compare us against the competitors. And these competitors are all Taiwan manufacturers, so they're all the leading suppliers of solar modules in the world. And we definitely are comparable or better in a lot of these cases. Um, and also, we've been a PVAL top performer for the past five years. And um, I know that they're launching the results um, next week. Uh, PVAL is going to announce the 2020 scorecard next week. And I'd like to mention that the, the, this particular product, the bifacial product, will be featured as a top performer. So we continue to maintain this lead. And we are, I think, only one of two manufacturers who you know been a top performer consecutively for almost six years now, if you take the 2020 results into account as well. Okay, um, that's all I have from Jinko's side. I'm going to pass it on to Kaushik from DuPont, who will talk a little bit more. Um, happy to take questions and answer any you know, questions that you have. Thank you. Thanks, Vikash. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, good uh, afternoon, good evening. Um, from wherever you are uh, in the world. Um, so my name is Kaushik and uh, from DuPont, I will be taking you through um, a few more, uh, hopefully interesting data points on uh, <clears throat> more on the material side. You heard a lot of about the, uh, about the module performance and uh, an excellent account of uh, how uh, the technology uh, in terms of modules uh, uh, is being uh, moved forward by Jinko and uh, what the performance are. So uh, let's dig. So DuPont has been in the in the PV industry and uh, supplying materials uh, for more than 30, 35 years. And, um, and the two things, the two cornerstones of, uh, of uh, the materials that uh, we uh, proudly supply in this industry are uh, performance over long term and how it helps drive the total cost of, uh, of energy uh, in the process. So um, most of us are familiar with the levelized cost of electricity and the different components that go in it, uh, all the way from the costs on the modules, the uh, operations and maintenance, uh, to the um, side of efficiency and system performance and energy yield. Um, in my presentation, uh, I, I, I'm recasting some of these into um, four different buckets um, in terms of the materials reliability, uh, in terms of uh, the energy yield that uh, you uh, can get out of these uh, modules and your system, in terms of lowering the cost of installation, um, balance of systems and operations and maintenance. And then finally, um, uh, you know, ma a mature ma manufacturing process so that the overall cost is, uh, is also lowered. And how these different things come together to actually uh, lower the total cost of ownership of a PV system uh, for any downstream uh, asset owner. So um, let's start with the first bucket um, in terms of material reliability. Uh, uh, I'll take you through a few slides uh, where we'll see how this material, the, the back sheet in question, and uh, the clear transparent back sheet in question uh, is holding up in terms of the, um, the main properties that it is, uh, that is needed of it. So whenever we talk about materials reliability, we generally look at the field. That's where we always start. And I'd like to draw your attention to this uh, plot over here on the right. What this shows is, uh, this is this has been um, extracted from uh, our 2020 Global Field Analysis Report. So DuPont, uh, for those that don't know, uh, also runs a, a, a PV field reliability program, a global program, where a lot of uh, installed modules are, are inspected and analyzed, and material degradation and module degradation is documented. Um, so the trends that we are seeing uh, in this plot, uh, as you can see here, is uh, uh, over the years, there's an increased 
number of uh, defects both at the module level and at the back sheet level. And uh, we're, we're increasingly encountering field failures after a few years, and obviously this can eat into the, uh, the return on investment on these materials. So one of the incumbents in the bifacial area, uh, things that we are discuss discussing over here are glass back sheets. So here's an example of uh, what kind of things we are seeing for glass backed modules in the field. And <clears throat> Uh, we have a lot of examples, and I just wanted to show a few examples with a mix of uh, the number of years that they have been in the field. We have examples from 10 to 15 years in the field, and newer examples, um, materials or modules that have been in the field for not more than uh, one and a half to two years. And also uh, from different parts of the world, you see, uh, you know, the Southwest USA, uh, different parts of China. Um, the main things that we are seeing in these glass back modules are delamination, propensity to delaminate, and um, um, a corresponding um, effect of corrosion uh, in the bus bars and finger lines. So now if we turn our attention to uh, to the uh, material under question, the transparent back sheet, obviously we do not have a lot of examples of transparent back sheets because uh, um, bifacial has, has not had, was not there in the, in the market for, for long, but uh, in terms of long-term liability, we do have examples of the transparent back sheet uh, that was employed in building integrated PV. So here's an example for, from Netherlands. This has been in the field. Uh, the time of its inspection, it was 18 years in the field. Now it's uh, over 20 years. And um, the interesting thing to note over here was there are no uh, telltale signs of a back sheet uh, degradation in here, no signs of yellow, yellowing, cracking, or delamination. So uh, armed with that uh, confidence, uh, we, uh, we launched the new um, transparent Tedlar film uh, that uh, uh, won the PV Magazine Award in 2019. And Vikash mentioned in, in his uh, presentation how, you know, a back sheet structure, which is shown over here on the right, it has this particular transparent film on the air side protecting the core uh, typically, which is a, a polyester layer, and then the inner side of that back sheet is coated with a fluoropolymer coating. Um, so when uh, when we are uh, thinking about uh, the transparent film, the things that we are looking for are obviously high transparency, because you don't want any of the light that's incident uh, on the backside to, uh, to be lost, or you want to harvest as much as you can. So we're looking for high transparency. Obviously, we're looking for robust mechanical properties. And uh, we definitely need the UV protection for the, the core PET layer. Uh, here's a plot over here showing how the, the, the transparency of the film itself is pretty flat across the solar spectrum, or the usable solar spectrum. Uh, optical transmission is as high as 94%. And I'll come to some of these uh, mechanical properties in the context of uh, the back sheet, which is much more Im important in this case. Um, now, uh, turning our attention to the back sheet that's made out of the transparent film. Uh, again, the structure is here uh, for your reference on the left. Uh, we look at first the optical properties, uh, the optical transmission and uh, uh, one of the things that is of generally of concern about polymers put out in UV is how the, the polymer gets uh, discolored over time. What we are showing here on this graph on the right is uh, with a UV xenon exposure uh, all the way out to 400 kilowatt hours per meter square, which is well uh, beyond what the back sheet would encounter over 25 to 30 years. Uh, we see that the tra optical transmittance is pretty much flat all across that. And the yellowness index um, rises a little bit, but any number that's below uh, this value of two on the right is actually, it's a very minimal increase uh, without uh, uh, interfering with the optical transmission. Next, we turn our attention to the mechanical properties. Um, I have two plots over here. Um, once, uh, uh, once the back sheet is made and then integrated into the uh, into the module, uh, we uh, we are plotting actually two different directions 
uh, in the module. And this is important because uh, there is a general uh, lamination direction, which is the machine direction or the longitudinal direction. And then there's a transverse direction. And for a lot of polymers, the, the mechanical properties are not similar in those two directions for oriented polymers. Uh, and try, for example, for, for information, the tedlar that is used in SPAC sheet is an or oriented polymer. Uh, so we need, to, we need to track it in both directions. So what we are showing here is the parameter which is called elongation, and that, that measures uh, you know, the propensity of the polymer to crack or lose its mechanical properties, again, under different kinds of exposures. Two typical type of exposures are shown here. Uh, one is a UV exposure, again, all the way out to 400 kilowatt hour, uh, and then the other uh, is a damp heat all the way out to 3000. What we see here is the, the, uh, the elongation in both cases are pretty flat in both directions and well above 100 in both cases, even after you know, 3000 hours of damp heat or uh, 400 kilowatt hours of UV exposure. Um, next, I'm showing uh, uh, giving you a flavor of a, a sequence, a sequential test. So the earlier chart showed you two single stresses, one a UV and the other one was a damp heat. This is actually a sequence that, uh, that was run at Jinko. Uh, it combined a damp heat 3000, PC600, PCT60, and then a UV of 360 kilowatt hour. And in both cases, uh, we see that, you know, uh, uh, the, the, num the numbers, the tensile strength, and both the elongation and break uh, are pretty much uh, well above the required value. Uh, so in case of tensiles, it's well above 100. In case of elongation and break, in this case, even after this sequential um, uh, uh, test, it's well above 60%, which is kind of a, an internal high standard that's, that's set. So in both cases, the tensile and the elongation hold up pretty well uh, after, after this long sequence. We turn our attention towards abrasion resistance because a lot of these modules are actually uh, deployed in areas where um, there could be increased uh, uh, sand or, or, or other debris. Um, I show you here two, uh, uh, two results and on the left, what we are doing is we are um, uh, comparing the tedlar based transparent backsheet to, uh, to two other uh, competitive backsheets. And, and this is a standard test for solar energy transmittance. Um, and after the, after the completion of the test, as you can see here, um, after 100 liters of sand uh, abrasion and surface cleaning, uh, the tedlar based backsheet only loses about 0.78% of the total uh, light loss, uh, light transmittance, uh, while the others are much higher. And uh, mind you, this amount of sand and the abrasion is actually uh, much more harsh than typically what the modules would encounter in even uh, a desert kind of environment. On the other hand, on the right uh, is another test, a similar test, which shows uh, how much amount of, um, uh, of sand is needed to actually erode away the outer layer uh, of the material. Ag again, in this case, you see the clear difference between the Tedlar-based transparent back sheet and uh, a couple of uh, competitive ones. Um, I want to turn your attention towards another property that is important for bifacial pork uh, modules. Uh, a lot of these modules actually uh, uh, suffer from uh, PID, uh, potential induced degradation. Uh, this definitely is tied into the quality of the cell. Uh, however, in general, uh, the for bifacial pork cells, the rare site passivation on the cells are not often not as good as on the front side, and they are more prone to um, uh, iron-mediated uh, potential-induced degradation and power loss on the rear side. Uh, what, it, what we did was a comparison of uh, um, glass back sheet and, and uh, a glass back sheet module and a glass glass module uh, with similar um, bill of materials uh, with a polyolefin-based uh, encapsulant in there comparing the loss in power after, in this case, actually pretty significantly uh, long hours, so all the way out to 384 hours. Uh, what we see here is interesting because on the rare side, which is our, our point of concern uh, or, or, or comparison in this case, we see the, um, the, the polymer back sheet clearly outperforming the glass in this case, uh, as, as you can see here. 
Okay, uh, you you saw some results from PVEL uh, and that uh, third party that uh, that uh, um, Vikash mentioned. Here's another um, uh, result from uh, PVEL. Uh, PVEL has uh, recently introduced the backsheet durability sequence as part of their product qualification protocol or program, and uh, the transparent Tedlar backsheet actually was taken through that, and uh, it's a, it's a, again a sequential test sequential accelerated test combining damp heat, uh, UV, uh, thermal cycling, um, humidity freeze, and uh, uh, and, uh, and the last round of UV as well. Um, the important thing over here is throughout the test, uh, the Tedlar-based uh, transparent back sheet came out with, uh, with no cracking, yellowing, or delamination, or any other signs of defects. Um, the other point that I want to make is that this test indeed is effective in um, in pointing towards mechanical deficiencies in, in back sheets that have been encountered in the field, for example, with a PVDF-based back sheet uh, that is shown here. Okay, that brings me to the second part. Uh, so a lot on the, on the reliability. I'll try to touch on a little bit on the, on the energy yield. Uh, Vikash has, uh, has extensively showed this uh, in uh, several charts, uh, how they're uh, tracking uh, comparatively the energy yield from a bifacial uh, transparent back sheet module compared to glass. And he has shown you this chart where they, they, uh, they did the test on four different types of surfaces. And um, the, the thought here is the, the better thermal handling capability of the transparent back sheet enables a, a module to run, modules to run at lower temperatures versus the last back, uh, back modules, and therefore you get the energy gain. Uh, I've been trying to uh, work with Fraunhofer uh, trying to model this, uh, this behavior. Uh, so uh, it's a little bit of an eye chart, but I'll take you quickly through this. Uh, what we did was we supplied Fraunhofer with four different types of back sheets. Uh, two of these glass glass and the other two were trans tedlar based back sheets. Yeah. Each of them was with, with or without a white grid, which is a popular now uh, to improve a little bit of a reflection from the backside and increase power. And uh, the, what Fraunhofer did was they scanned the in, uh, uh, radiation on the front and tracked both the module operating temperature and therefore the model power that was generated from these. And what's interesting to see is that at higher irradiance, is something that Vikash also pointed out from the um, from the uh, PVEL results, um, we see that the, um, the the polymer back sheet modules actually run at low temperatures compared to their glass counterpart. And I'm just pointing out uh, one of the numbers over here at 1,000 watts per meter square. See uh, a corresponding polymer back module running at about about two degrees lower operating temperature and generating a little bit over watt power at that temp at that um, at that uh, uh, incident uh, uh, light. Uh, and this particular modeling was done with only 10% ground albedo. Right now we are trying to understand this better, and we are trying to you know, uh, scan different ground albedo levels. So our belief is with higher higher reflection, we'll get an even more differentiation. Uh, come moving on to the third bucket over here. Um, again, Vikash uh, showed you quite a bit of this and I'll try to um, see if I can add something to that. Um, um, Vikash pointed out, you know, the, with, with increasing module size, um, the glass glass uh, modules uh, will uh, outweigh the the the, uh, uh, the glass back sheet modules, uh, and this uh, amounts to higher cost in terms of installation handling on the glass glass modules. But uh, this can also lead to uh, uh, to the modules being more prone to breakage uh, and during any of these activities. Um, what I wanted to point out uh, was uh, this other part because uh, I did mention some advantages in operations and maintenance around soiling. And uh, the Tedlar based back sheet being um, uh, a fluorinated uh, material is naturally hydrophobic. Um, so again, we, uh, we uh, have been doing some uh, actual um, experiments with Fraunhofer and this is another uh, part of Fraunhofer, and I'm showing you some, again, uh, interesting results over here. What I'm showing is on uh, two, two plots over here. On the left is uh, 
uh, and a cleaning efficiency of dust removal with wind cleaning, with a simulated wind cleaning. And the comparison is between solar glass and a transparent Teller based back sheet over here. And you see that there is an a little bit of an advantage in the Tedlar transparent back sheet. On the right, we are actually showing what happens when dust is deposited and then they, it's, um, it's, tr it's removed with water. Uh, which is a very common phenomenon in all field uh, um, applications. Here we see the difference. Uh, uh, here we also see the difference in the cleaning eff efficiency between the transparent tedlar and, and the solar glass. Um, with this indoor soiling test, we have also had a results field. Again, this is a results from the field from Jinko, where we have seen. A modules with bifacial transparent back sheets where there's uh, almost no obvious dirt and very little dust accumulation on the on the modules and side by side on the other hand uh, we there are uh, dust uh, and dirt accumulation on glass um, packed modules which are much more difficult to remove uh, another example from the uh, in terms of the cleaning the, and soiling resistance. Um, this is a China standard uh, test, uh, and what uh, is shown here is uh, uh, a before and after rin rinse uh, situations uh, comparing uh, the transparent Tedlar based back sheet versus PV glass. You can clearly see that after the rinse, uh, with an equal amount of um, the cleaning liquid, which is water in this case, everything remaining same. And the Tedlar back, uh, back sheet looks much more cleaner in this case, showing clearly its, uh, its advantage in this area. Uh, I'm um, finally in the last part uh, is around how, uh, you know, uh, very little difference uh, uh, exists in, in terms of uh, the capital investment that's needed in order to make uh, bifacial modules with the, with the polymer backed modules. Um, in terms of, uh, the yield rates and therefore productivity uh, with the uh, increased number of uh, glass glass modules being produced with thinner glass uh, it needs um, stricter process control around the handling of those and therefore a lo a, a larger uh, loss of uh, of yield um, so in this case uh, again it is a differentiating factor. Uh, and the faster production speed is the third part, uh, where again, thinner tempered glass uh, needs much longer time uh, to raise and lower the temperatures. Um, this again slows uh, the lamination speed and therefore affects productivity to some extent. Um, so bringing all of these together, uh, hopefully I have shown you in all of these four buckets how these things add up all the way from material reliability to energy yield uh, to lowering the cost uh, in terms of the installation and operations and maintenance uh, all the way to uh, being amenable to a mat mature man manufacturing process how all of these things will add up to offer to uh, downstream asset owners an overall total low lower cost of ownership uh, over the and the lifetime of a pv project with that um I'm at the end of my presentation, and like Vikash, I'm uh, I'm open uh, to take uh, your questions. Thank you for your attention. Yes, thank you. Um, we are now entering the Q and A portion of the webinar. Remember, you can continue to submit questions at any time in the Q and A widget at the bottom of your screen. So, our first question, pulling them up. Okay. Um. Have you, how have you tested for the bifaciality? Um, how'd you get those results? I guess that's a question for Vikash. Maybe Vikash, uh, yeah, you want to take that? I can, I can provide some, yes. So uh, bifaciality really is the ratio of, just to clarify again, bifaciality is the ratio of the front side irradiation to the back side irradiation. And typically this is found, you know, on the data sheet and so on and so forth. Um, so there is a standard, there's an IEC standard by how you measure bifaciality, and that ensures, I mean, the standard is very comprehensive. It ensures it's tested the right way and calculates bifaciality. Um, Jinko modules are 70 plus or minus 5% in terms of bifaciality. Um, however, you, you see a lot of variability even within a technology perspective, even within PERC I've seen some changes. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that bifaciality is different from bifacial gain. Uh, bifaciality really says that 70% of the, of the back of the module is active, 
and can produce power. Uh, bifacial gain, again, is more installation dependent. But uh, just to answer your, your question directly, we use the IEC standard, and that's how we calculate bifaciality. Okay, here's another one from Akash. Uh, how do you see the Jinko product roadmap evolving with relevance to transparent back sheets? Sure, yeah, um, I think you must have generally seen in the industry, uh, you know, push for higher power class modules. Uh, a lot of this is driven by, you know, improvements in cell technologies. I, I still think it's improvements because uh, we've seen that larger cell formats have become more efficient and thereby mush, you know, basically push up the module efficiency. Um, so yes, Jinko is looking at um, newer technologies on the module side that reflect these improvements in cell technology. However, moving forward, uh, because of the success we've seen with transparent back sheets with our half cell products, all our future products, by facial products, will be using the half cell. I mean, we'll be using the transparent back sheet. Um, so yes, uh, you know, we will not be changing the format at all. It will still be uh, glass with a transparent back sheet for bifacial products. Okay. Along those same lines for Jinko, we've kind of noticed this trend of, of larger wafers. So do you plan to use the M6, M12, or, or bigger wafers with the bifacial transparent back sheet? Yes. So uh, we don't follow the, the traditional M6, M12 standard. We do something slightly different. But yes, Jinko will also be focusing on bigger wafers in general. And one other thing is we're also making, um, you know, uh, we're introducing a new technology called tiling ribbon, which you will see in our future products. So that's the module technology which we're implementing. But yeah, bigger wafers in combination with this new module technology that we're introducing called tiling ribbon is expected to enhance the, you know, module efficiency significantly. And we'll, you know, this will be adopted both for our monofacial and bifacial products, essentially. Okay. So since the back sheet has three layers, the one being the Tedlar and then two layers of adhesive. Are you always using the same adhesive or are there other types of adhesive you're using? So typically, as you mentioned, there's, there's three layers. There's the outer layer, which is, um, you know, the Tedlar, the PVF film. The inner layer also tends to be the same most of the time. Uh, I'd say majority of the time, 95% of the time, it's PET. Uh, however, you know, that's the middle layer that goes in there. The inner layer could change a little bit, so, uh, but traditionally the outer layer, which is the Tedlar, and the middle layer has, is, is, is the same pretty much most of the time. Uh, but the inner layer, you could we have some slight variation to answer that question. Kelly, can I a add a little sure. bit to that? Um, yeah, so it, it's a relevant question in terms of uh, uh, materials controls and process control and things like that. Um, so yes, I, I, at our end, um, uh, DuPont uh, is typically just supplies the Tedlar uh, outer layer material. However, um, in order to maintain the really high quality and standard in terms of performance, as well as uh, long-term reli reliability of our product, we work very closely with the backsheet laminators in ensuring that pretty much everything that goes in the backsheet construction in at, at all um, levels of you know the different layers that are going there adhesive score layers and inner layer that they pass our rigorous tests that we subject both our films and the back sheets and only then we kind of uh, sort of uh, um, okay it to be to be um, to be uh, commercialized in the, in the in the market so we really we really try to invest a lot of uh, time and energy in ensuring that the product we put out uh, meets the highest level of standards and we work very closely with the laminators on that. Perfect, okay. Here's the next question. How can, how can the public, how can they reflect the lower operating temperature of the transport back sheet to model, you know, in, in energy modeling? Um, that's a very good point. So I don't think as of now it's being captured in energy modeling. And, and as you, you know, uh, as we just discussed, these are very recent results. Even for us within Jinko, we've just, you know, field tested some of this and we've seen a big difference. So we will definitely look to work with, you know, our customers and partners on how this could reflect on their, you know, performance simulations and so on and so forth. Um, and it's interesting because it might not really be reflected in a lab environment, but in an outdoor field environment, you can see that there is, you know, an energy production advantage that you would you would have it 
the transparent back sheet. So, uh, yeah, that, that's definitely something in the works for us all to figure out. But uh, it's, it's, it's a good piece of news that we could all use to benefit and improve the performance of our systems. Okay. Is the transparent back sheet, is that um, approved for use like in floating solar installations? Um, uh, we, uh, yeah, actually, yes, um, we have had, um, so essentially, you know, the Kerala uh, baked, uh, based outer layer is, uh, uh, in terms of its chemical composition, it's essentially the same. And we have uh, quite a few uh, Tedlar backed uh, module uh, projects on, on floating solar or, or in, uh, in, in deployments where it's, it's near or over water uh, kind of uh, applications. Um, not so many in the transparent area yet, but there are a couple of big projects that have already gone on uh, on over water. And uh, uh, again, with the with the field experience with Tedlar for over 35 years, and some of these uh, are in close proximity to water, we have not seen any uh, significant uh, differences in the degradation of either the back sheet or the component materials in there uh, in, in any of these. So yes, we are pretty confident that it should be equally good uh, in overwater uh, or floating or agro photovoltaic kind of applications. Because you want to add on that to that? Eh? Yeah, I mean, um, as, as uh, Kaushik mentioned, yes, we don't see why not. And Kaushik provides an example. So um, yeah, most of my statements are, you know, basically what Kaushik is stating. So, yeah. Okay. Is the module cleaning process the same for both sides, or do you have to use something different for the transparent back sheet compared to the front glass? Uh, mm. Should I get that question? Go ahead. Or you wanna... go, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll add to okay. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Okay. So, um, you know, we pointed out in some of the slides that, you know, there's different properties in glass as opposed to the transparent back sheet. Um, so we've, we've also seen general papers published, and we've also seen from our internal analysis that, um, you know, basically, uh, soiling does not significantly impact uh, when you have a transparent back sheet, so you do not have significant soiling. So when you have, you know, a glass glass module, you would see soiling both in the front and the back of the module. With back sheets in general, we do not see as much soiling as um, you would typically see. Uh, and we also see that, you know, a lot of the time, the back of the module is not exposed to the external environment and, and in general to soiling and so on and so forth, right? So uh, we don't see a strong need to actually clean the back of the module and it continues to produce energy per se. Um, however, if people choose to clean the back of the module, we have guidance in our installation manuals that clearly state how we would like it to be cleaned. Uh, but yeah, from our analysis and from our field studies, um, we haven't seen much soiling actually happening at the back of the module at all because of all the properties we highlighted on. So uh, yeah, Kaushik, do you want to add to that? Uh, no, yeah, uh, all, all of that is good. And in fact, if I may quote another, I think it was a, a study in the Middle East done by Jinko or maybe in South Latin America. Uh, they had uh, quantified uh, some number. It was around nine to ten times less soiling on the on the rear side versus the front in general uh, in any installations. And it will be specific to a particular location, but still on gen in general. So soiling on the rear side is in, in fact a little bit less of an issue. And however, um, you know, in terms of the uh, of the cleaning process, you know, simple water uh, is good enough and there's enough examples that uh, soiling in general is a le less of an issue in the, in the transparent back sheet uh, and I showed some results and both of us showed some results on that. Yeah. Okay. Uh Here's a question probably for Takash. Does Jinko have an output estimation tool that factors location, tilt, shading, um, and reflective backdrop like a white TPO roof? So uh, we rely on industry standard tools. So PD6 now accounts for bifacial modules as well. So they uh, you know, account for factors like albedo, reflective surfaces, and so on and so forth. Um, we provide some guidance from the module side as to how you could, you know, insert variables in the simulation tool, but Jinko themselves don't have a tool that we have in-house. Uh, but we basically support our customers who use industry standard tools like PDSYST or Aurora and so on and so forth. 
Along those same lines, we talk a lot about the the albedo, uh, the the bounce off. Are, are you guys finding a lot of increased power production, like with carports using bifacial modules, compared to just like a flat roof? So that's interesting. So uh, we do have some studies that you know. So the reflective light again comes down to how much reflective light reaches the back of the module. So for a carport, it kind of comes down to you know how much of the bottom of the carport is reflecting light back on and how much of a white box effect you could produce where you could provide more reflective light. In general, we find based on studies is that reflective light, you know, kind of, you know, eases out after a certain point and it's more ambient light. So uh, typically, say, you know, a ground mount would have more reflective light, act, you know, essentially actively falling on the back of the module versus a carport. However, it all depends on the scenario. And, uh, you know, the way you would typically measure this is you would have an irradiance sensor and you could sense the amount of irradiation that you could, you would see at the back of the module. And that would be reflective of what you could expect in terms of bifacial gain. But, yeah, to answer your question specifically, um, ground mounts have more reflective light and carports have more ambient light accessing them. But it could change depending on installation variable. Okay, we have time for just a few more questions. Um, this one's for Akashic. Uh, glass glass modules pass the damp heat test with no issues. So, do you think that transparent back sheets are are equally as good for environments with high moisture or temperature, like like tropical areas? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an interesting question because uh, a lot of the uh, evaluations of glass backed modules have, uses extended hours of damp heat. Um, although I must caution everyone in general, uh, uh, we in general are very, uh, we are very um, wary about really extended hours of damp heat because uh, um, from the field experience, since we have been doing a lot of field work, as I tried to point out, um, we don't see a lot of correlation between very extended hours of damp heat with what happens in the field. Having said that, um, we did um, subject uh, all these back sheets, uh, the back sheet samples that I've shown in, in my presentation to um, over 3,000 hours of damp heat, and we see absolutely no change in the um, in the mechanical properties or the optical properties. So that gives us very good confidence that uh, at least from the back sheet point of view, uh, and therefore uh, in the module where the processes are very strictly controlled by someone like Jinko, uh, we would be definitely at par with uh, glass uh, in terms of the, you know, the moisture content, which is the main um, differentiator in a in a in a tropical kind of environment. And in terms of UV, you've already seen. Uh, Vikash shows some results how, in fact, the actual uh, UV blocking capability of the uh, the transparent back sheet versus the glass on the backside could, in fact, um, lead to uh, a little bit of an extra power or, or a little less loss of uh, of power on the BAM degradation. So, yes, we are confident that even in a tropical area where generally you have high UV and maybe a little slightly higher moisture con content in the atmosphere should be very good. Okay, I think this will be our last question. Um, does Jinko have any recommendations for optimizing albedo with single axis trackers, such as maybe increasing the spacing from the torque tubes that, that connect everything? Yeah, uh, so maybe uh, I could try and answer that question. So um, as you might know, a majority of the application of bifacial modules is on single axis trackers. A lot of our customers buy these modules for single axis trackers a lot of the time. And um, the leading tracker companies in general have optimized their tracker solution to ensure that they can, you know, essentially capture as much bifacial as possible. So they typically have a different clamp that would, you know, provide a little bit more spacing between the, the, the talk tube and the actual module. And that enables more uh, reflected light to actually access the back of the module. And this is proven that, you know, in general, you could get a little bit more out of your solar module when you use this, this uh, bifacial clamp. And the leading tracker companies now practice that in general. Uh, but uh, besides that, you know, uh, albedo and all of these other factors also play a role. And with trackers alone, we see variability based on albedo as well. So if you, even though they use this clamp in, in different environments, you have different outputs. So if it's grass, it's different. If it's cement, it's different, and so on and so forth. 
but yeah, I just wanted to highlight what uh, tracker companies are doing to enable bifacial gain from module, bifacial module. Okay, perfect. Well, that is all the time we have for questions today. We did get a lot of questions in, so um, if you do have more questions, feel free to contact our presenters on your own. And this webinar will be shared with all registrants so you can view it again at your convenience. I'd like to thank Kashik and Bakash for being here and DuPont and Jinko Solar for sponsoring today's webinar. Thanks to everyone in the audience for participating. Hope you enjoyed our presentation and we invite you to join us for more Solar Power World webinars in the future. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you.